Hey everybody, it's Ed. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, really excited, but also a little bit disappointed about this video that I'm doing right now. Uh, we're talking about the Supernote, and I did a live stream the other night when they came out with this update, uh, but I wanted to dig more into the word functionality of the Supernote, since they had added in keyboard shortcuts, and they had had some other things that seemed really cool at the time. And I'm going to walk through that a little bit in this video, but you'll, you'll see some frustrations. You can work on it that way. I personally wouldn't at this point. If all you're doing is typing, this could actually be a pretty decent typing replacement. So you could carry your super note and you could carry a Bluetooth keyboard and you could just type. Uh, for the most part, the bolding works, italics, um, and, and some other components. But what doesn't quite work yet is the copy paste, the selection tools, those keyboard shortcuts worked for a minute and then they quit working and I haven't been able to get them to start working again. You can select large blocks, but you can't select like words or phrases. You have to start at the bottom and like do an entire paragraph. Uh, but you'll see all of that. You'll also see some of the frustrations uh, when it comes to input via just handwriting with recognition and with the virtual keyboard handwriting recognition. To be fair, you wouldn't want to do all of these things in the same document at the same time like I was trying to do. So that's the TDLR. Uh, so if, if you're, you know, just wanting to get that piece of this and kind of understand what some of the frustration points are, that would be what to take away from this. And I'll have a blog article as well that I'll post in the description. That being said, let's go ahead and jump on over into some of the explanation. All right, I want to start out before we get into specifics on this, by talking about what you're seeing on the screen, this is me setting up and kind of beginning the process of writing my blog, trying to use the word document feature. And as I said in the intro, this has been something that I've wanted to institute for a long time. I like the idea of being able to directly format in a native word document have that then translate over to the larger kind of uh, context of what uh, the supernode ecosystem can do and then be able to take that directly into my word document on my computer clean it up just a little bit and then move it over to my blog so what you see here is me writing that in and we'll talk a little bit more about this in depth as we go further along with uh, this whole discussion. But this is kind of how I was setting up that piece. Now, one thing, and we'll talk about this here in a little while, is that it doesn't automatically recognize your text, which is why you're seeing so much text here. You have to manually recognize that when you're ready, which is what you're seeing right here. And then you have to wait for that process. So that's how it used to be done with uh, the Supernote. And in the notes, the real-time recognition notes, you can do that same process and to see kind of in real time what your notes would look like. But what's different about this is that until you do that, you can't edit, you can't strike through. And, and like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. But I did want you to see this is the setup. Now, I am going to fast forward through sections of this so that you're not watching this whole process uh, because it does take a little while. Uh, it is more cumbersome than the notes. And I want to get onto how each of the things work a little bit better and have that conversation. It should be noted here that I am also using the virtual keyboard with the handwriting recognition as well to do some of the final edits as this is going to be pushed into then Word. Uh, so that that kind of is going by really, really fast right now. But I just wanted to, to draw that to your attention. That way, when you see us move on to the Bluetooth keyboard, you won't think that I did all of this with that other piece of writing. 
I'm really going to speed this particular piece up, but I just wanted to show you, and I'm going to compress this pretty, like I said, pretty big, but how much cleanup had to be done after using the writing directly in Word. So you'll see that this just had to be reformatted in a lot of different ways. It was a very clunky process. But I wanted to jump in and show this really fast before we move on to the virtual keyboard and how that's used in the system. All right, everybody. So now we get to the really cool part. So of all the things I've tried today with this process, the Bluetooth typing was probably the best. I do want to apologize in advance. You're seeing my shadow of my fingers typing there. Uh, you also see me up in the corner uh, actually typing this uh, as I'm recording it you know, for this screen. Again, a little bit of a voiceover piece here, but just wanted to show, you know, what this looked like, what the experience was like. It was very snappy considering uh, the connectivity was good. The biggest problem with this, and this was also mentioned during my live stream on the same topic, was the idea that you can't really select text at this point. For some reason, control arrow isn't working as it should to be able to allow you to select one word back or two words back or a small section of text. You can use the up and down arrows to select large blocks as long as you start at the beginning. But if you then try to remove any of that, you get this kind of weird, it moves it, but it doesn't expand the selection. So it, it's just a little strange. But again, we'll speed up through this a little bit, but I do want to let you know that the overall experience the control B, control I, control um, U for underlining, all of that works really well. Uh, you can do that both to and from, so you can combine all of those together and then easily take them off. One of the biggest sticking points on this, however, was the idea that if you left the formatting one way or the other from the previous text, there's no way to correct for that. Um, when you switch over to the handwriting piece. But again, that's not a fault of the Bluetooth. It's just kind of what the the way the system is set up currently. Okay, so finally, we're going to look at the experience with the virtual handwriting keyboard in the Supernote. This has traditionally been one of my favorite ways to interact with the keyboard or with Supernote in general. The handwriting recognition tends to be very good uh, in the Notes app and even if I'm doing titling or anything like that. I think that the Bluetooth keyboard might give me some more options and be a little bit easier in the future to rename files and do things of that sort. But for now, this was one of my favorite things. And Overall, what you'll see here, and it's fairly lengthy, so I'm going to speed it up quite a bit just to be able to show you what that looks like. But it works really well. Uh, it did have a few issues where it hand or it recognized my text a little too early, and it kind of cut me off in mid-thought. That's probably the biggest issue with it, and you can adjust how quickly it recognizes your text. And, of course, there's only so much room within that box that you can actually use that for to to make it work the right way uh, it's you're limited by the space of the physical space of the box whereas if you're writing it in word you don't have as much limitation as far as that goes but then you have to manually do that handwriting recognition every time so if they can figure out at supernote kind of how to do both of those things really well I think you'll see this move at a much better pace and maybe even get some more adoption to, to make that work. But anyway, again, very cool. I think it's there's a use case for it. But at the same time, I think you have to decide, is it something I feel like I want to type, something I feel like I want to write? Do I even want to do that in a native Word document or would I rather go ahead and do that in a note that's recognizing everything in the background and then just move all of that text over to Word, export it as a Word file and do all of my editing there? Not saying any of those are right or wrong. It's just how you want to engage with that particular device. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Like I said, this is very much um, a learning process for me. Uh, this 
took me way out of my comfort zone as far as how I normally use the device. But I think it's really important for me to understand what some other potential workflows are and also how other people may approach the device. And a lot of that is this idea of native word compatibility that no other device has. You can work within the apps and other devices, but you can't handwrite in Word and other devices. You can't manipulate and seamlessly go back and forth. And unfortunately, you can't do that with the SuperNote either the way it's currently implemented. Now, you can do some of it. You can do light editing. You can do strike through. You can do some really cool things in there. And quite frankly, you can even do... Um, I, I would say some really cool stuff, but it's sluggish. It's hard to do. My recommendation would be to use it one way or the other. If you're looking to handwrite and then convert to Word, I would do that in a handwriting recognition note and then do that export to Word and then manipulate that document. It's faster, it's easier, it's quicker, it, it just works. Or I would set up your uh, tabs, maybe your headings in a Word document, pull that in, and then quite frankly use the handwriting virtual keyboard for faster entry. It, it just feels better, it's easier to use. I can't really say much more than that, and I think that is the best use case that I would have for the device. Again, it's up to you. It's up to the way you use it, but that's how it really seems to work best for me. Um, the other option, which I think this actually, now that they're getting some of the shortcuts down, if they can fix being able to select words and phrases with the keyboard shortcuts and being able to copy paste correctly, you're almost there. The latency is very good as far as typing. I mean, it can keep up with me and I type upwards of 90 plus words a minute when I get moving really fast and it manages to keep up pretty well. Uh, and then you're typing directly in a Word document, you're traveling light, you're working quickly. Uh, I would turn off AutoSync while you're working with that document so you don't end up with a bunch of conflict files. But at the same time, you could, you know, you see large expenses around the free write and some of these typewriter replacements. This can be your typewriter replacement. It's low power. It's pretty easy to use. And you can easily zoom to the text. And it works pretty, pretty darn good. So you can make that text as large or as small as you want, and you can see it. Again, very good if you want to edit something using a Bluetooth keyboard, uh, except for the copy-paste functionality. If, if you're trying to do that, that's going to be difficult. But bolding, italics, underline, all of that currently works. The hard part is this last piece. So anyway, thank you again for... Uh, being here. Thank you for your support. Please let me know your thoughts, comments down below. Thank you to all of my patrons. I will show you uh, here at the end, uh, especially my supporter tier. Don't forget, you can sign up for a free one-week one trial if you want to see some of the behind-the-scenes things that I have going on, including some of the artificial intelligence stuff that I've been talking about that you can use for organization and productivity and some of the other just, you know, fun things that we're doing. Uh, that also gives you access to my Discord server, which I'm trying to get up and running slowly. And uh, until next time, I will talk to you soon and have a great rest of your day.